Hello and welcome to the ninth video in this series programming a tile puzzle game on the iPad using Cocos 2D and iOS. So, in this video we're actually going to start drawing the tiles on the screen. First thing we need to do is actually add our sprite sheet, which I talked about in video 2, and our property list containing the information for the frames on this sprite sheet into our resources section. So to do this, we need to go to wherever you've got property list and the PNG and drag and drop them into resources and then make sure you've got copy items checked and add to targets tile tutorial checked. I'll make these both available for download in the zip file that will be accompanied as a link with this video. So drawing the tiles to the screen. In the background layer, in the initialization here, to draw the board image we created a sprite from the board.png and then we added it as a child to the layer and it's drawn to the screen. We could do the same for all of our 24 tiles, but we're not going to do it in this way. Instead, we're going to use something called a sprite batch node. A sprite batch node is a class you can create inside your layers, and it what it does is it acts as a, a go between or an in between between the layer and the sprite. So the sprite is not added to the layer, it's added to the sprite batch node. And the sprite batch node then handles the drawing of the sprites. And the reason is, I won't go into a lot of detail, but the reason is, is that it optimizes and batch calls the drawing as much as it can with the sprites. So say you had 100 sprites and they were all going to be drawn at once, they will be drawn batch-wise by the sprite batch node all in one go with one drawing call. If they were all being called separately by the child, you would have 100 calls to draw these sprites to the screen at that time. So it simply can be seen as an in-between that makes your drawing a lot more efficient. To do this, you need to add your, or we'll be adding our PNG of the sprite sheet to the batch node. And we'll also be using something else called a sprite frame cache, which we need to add our property list to with the frame coordinates for our sprite sheet. Otherwise, the batch node won't know where the tiles are on the sprite sheet. So let's have a look at this in action. We're going to gameplayerlayer.h, and in there, we're going to add in a couple of variables. One of them is going to be our sprite batch node, which we'll create in initialization, and the other one is going to be an array of 24 sprites, which will be our tile sprites, and I've called this sprite board. And again, this will be initialized in the initialization function. So back in gameplayer.h, we can go around now and set this initialization up. So the first thing we do is create our sprite batch node, and we do it like this. You say a batch node with file and tell it which sprite sheet to use. And then you simply add the batch node as a child of the layer, and that's all you need to do. And from now on, we'll add all of our sprites to the batch node rather than the layer. And then the batch node will handle the drawing of the sprites. But because we're using a sprite sheet, we need to supply the sprite frame cache with our property list so everything can be drawn correctly. So add sprite frames with file and there's our property list. And now we can set about actually creating and adding our sprites. And you remember that the in the, the tiles are named tile 1, tile 2, tile 3, tile 4, and that enables us then to do a loop from 0 to 23 and add these tile images one by one then to our board array, or our sprite board array. So the way we're going to do this, I'll just pop in a couple of variables before we start the loop. When we go through the loop we'll need to set the file name so we have an inner string for that and also we'll be getting first of all the x and y coordinates that we want to set the tile up from these two functions here. Our coordinates are actually floats even though I'm returning ints here so they'll be cast, these, these ints will be cast into floats later on during the loop and I could, you could do it without these variables and just do a loop and add the things in in shorter code, but I want to be able to print these variables to the screen so we can have a look at what's gone on, which is why they're here. Then I've got another a, a, a boolean here, which simply says, are we in retina mode or not? And you can use a macro in Cocos 2D to ask what the scale factor is. And if the scale factor is 2.0, then we're in retina mode. And the reason I've done that is because inside my sprite sheet, I've got tile1, tile2, etc. PNG, but I've also got tile1-ipad HD. Dot png, And when you do it this way, 
The batch node won't select the correct PNG for the retina mode. You should supply two separate tile sprite sheets. Well, we haven't got very many and I just combine them all into one sprite sheet. So I'm going to need to specify if we're in retina mode the correct file name inside our loop. So I'll just copy in now the start of our loop and finish off the, the loop. And now we can get about setting our information. So I'll copy and paste in the first three lines. I'm doing some copy and paste a lot, I realize, but it's better to explain these things rather than sit there typing them out forever as well, otherwise the video will be 45 minutes long. So the first thing we do is get we loop 0 to 24, like I said, because we'll be storing each sprite in our sprite board array, which is indexed, not, sorry, we're looping 0 to 23, and we'll be storing in the sprite board array, which is obviously indexed 0 to 23, because it's got 24 spaces. When we come to getting the file name, we make it a string with format, tile, followed by a number, and this number is i plus 1. So the number order will be 1 to 24, because we're going 0 to 23 with i. And then we simply say, is it retina? If it is, then after the number, add a dash and iPad, otherwise add nothing, and then a dot PNG. And we'll see in the console when we run the application how the file name then actually looks, although it should be fairly uh, easy to guess. Print to the console the file name, and then like we did in the, uh, a bit like we did in the background layer where we used file name, this time, we create the sprite with a frame name from the frame cache and the frame name is the file name and we store that at the appropriate index and sprite board i. The next thing to do is for that sprite is get its x and y coordinate which I've done here using the functions we wrote in the last video because we know which column and row it's going to be on because we've now got i so we know whereabouts it's sitting. We'll log those values to the screen and then we'll set the anchor point at the bottom left point of the tile like I explained in the previous couple of videos on the diagram and then we simply set the position of the tile or this anchor point at x by y which positions our tile at the proper place on the screen. And the only thing that's remaining to do is to add then this sprite onto our batch node so it actually gets drawn. So really the critical thing here that's different to with the, the background layer is the sprite with frame name. We're saying that this sprite is a frame as part of this property list so that the frame cache can then be used to find the sprite on the appropriate sprite sheet. And that's all there is to it because the batch node will now handle the drawing of the sprites and the batch node as you can see here has been added as a child to the layer. So now we can run the application and I think the simulator is in HD mode, yes it is, and see what we get. And here you can see we get the board with the tiles placed reasonably centered on the board. They could do with being a tiny bit more to the right, but it's okay for tutorial purposes. And if we flick back into the into Xcode here and have a look at where the program started up on the console, it says here it's trying to use the tile sprite sheet, and now you can see the loop starting. And you can see here it's got the file name, and tile index north is positioned at 170 by 42, 306 by 40. So you can see clearly that our formulas for the coordinates are working, and you can see how the naming is then working for the file for the sprite file names as well. So one more thing that remains to be done, I'm just going to click stop on the top left, and I'm going to go quickly into the simulator and I'm going to change the hardware to a normal iPad. And I'm going to run again from Xcode. So a non-retina display and check that everything displays OK here. And yes, it all displays OK. Good. So in the next video, we'll carry on programming the logic for the actual game. So thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcomes always on YouTube.